Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be our second video in our DIY moving series. If you didn't watch last week's video, I covered how to prepare for your move. In this week's video, I'm going to be discussing how to pack for your move. So we're going to talk about some tips and tricks that will help you to pack more efficiently, save money, and ultimately save space inside your moving truck. Okay, so before we get into the actual packing, I want to discuss the differences between a professional move and a DIY move. So in a professional move, the movers will come in and they are responsible for packing everything for you. The main point of this is to be able to hold them liable for if anything breaks on the other end. And there is no back and forth about who is ultimately at fault because if you were to pack it and they were to move it, they could try to blame you. So their standard policy is they pack everything in your house. Now this is great as far as liability, but it's not so great as far as you being able to determine where you want stuff to be and knowing where your stuff is because they're gonna do it all, they're gonna mark it all, and you have no idea how it's gonna come out on the other end. So you might be wandering around for half a day trying to find one item that you really want or maybe even several days. The next major difference between a professional and DIY move is professionals will put everything in the boxes. So some professional movers, they might actually use a full size semi truck and so they could end up having multiple house, households in that truck. So to maximize that space and to keep everything nice and neat, everything will go into a box and then go in the truck that way. Except for, of course, furniture that can't be put into a box. For a DIY move, you can choose to put your stuff in however you want. You don't have to use moving boxes for everything. And this can save you money because boxes are expensive overall compared to, say, putting stuff into a trash bag and just putting that into the truck. So I'm going to discuss some of the various ways that you can pack your household goods. This will help you save a lot of money compared to a professional move. Also, if you're doing all the work yourself, you're saving on labor costs. Now, if you are doing your own move, you can hire laborers. For instance, if you're on U-Haul's website, you can ask for uh, labor help to help you pack and move, but that will cost you quite a bit more money. So if you manage to do everything yourself, including renting your own truck, that you're going to drive on your own and packing all of your goods, you will save a significant amount of money compared to paying for any sort of professional help or to have professional movers do it all for you. To start with, I'm going to discuss how to pack your garage. Because of my unique living situation living in a warehouse and the amount of warehouse space I have with about 7,000 feet of garage space, I'm going to discuss all the different methods that you can do to help pack more efficiently to get all of your garage stuff into your truck. Unfortunately, the garage is one of the most difficult areas to pack efficiently. This is because most of the items in the garage are gonna be awkward in shape and bulky, so they're not necessarily gonna fit into a standard moving box. The first thing I recommend is to clean everything in the garage before you put it in the truck. So vacuum it down, wipe it down, and if you can, rinse it off. And this is pretty straightforward because spiders and other insects love to make the garage their home because it's a nice safe space for them and you just don't want to transport that stuff in your truck. The next thing to consider is instead of using moving boxes for your garage stuff, try buying some plastic totes. The thing is most of your garage items are probably going to be heavy and just being the awkward shape that they are, you're not going to have good sized boxes that are going to be able to fit everything in there and you're not going to be able to pack those boxes efficiently to make the most of that space. And when a box isn't packed efficiently, it can easily collapse under the weight of the box on top of it in the truck. So buying some plastic totes, which are quite a bit more expensive than your moving boxes, are going to be ultimately better for when you pack those items because it doesn't matter to the plastic tote if it's not packed all the way to the top because it's rugged and capable of handling the weight of the plastic bin above it and since they are easily stackable this makes packing all those items putting them in your truck and making that space efficient in the truck a lot easier than using a moving box if you are someone who has a lot of power tools such as drills and sanders and stuff that stuff can still be packed away into a normal moving box relatively easily now, if some of your tools are larger, more expensive, like say a large circular saw, then a lot of times when you bought that tool, it probably came with a case to carry it and protect it. So simply put it back in that case and then put it in the moving truck like a normal box. Now, if you have other items, then you might have to determine what's best, a plastic tote or a standard moving box. So whichever you prefer on those. Now, if you have gas powered equipment such as lawn mowers, weed whackers, leaf blowers, or anything else that uses gasoline, 
then I highly suggest you take that piece of equipment and you drain the gasoline from it. If you have the ability to drain it, then do that. And if you can't drain it, then simply run it until it runs out of gas. The last thing you want is to have a lot of gasoline powered equipment in the back of your truck. It's just a safety hazard and it's gonna start to make the area smell. So if those items are used for lawn equipment that have all that gas in it, then also make sure to wash those items down extremely well because you never know what could be on them and you don't wanna take a bunch of grass clippings into the truck and have it get on other items that could be in your truck as well. Another quick tip for your garage is if you have a shop vacuum, then you can simply empty out that vacuum, make sure the inside's nice and clean, and then you can take the hose off of it and all the attachments that you have and you should be able to fit it all inside the vacuum itself, put the top back on and now everything for your shop vacuum is nice and secured all in one spot and you don't have to go pack that stuff away into a box. Everything's self-contained inside the vacuum itself so that helps you make your move more efficient. If you like to do a lot of yard work and you like having your yard look extremely nice, then you might have dirt or fertilizer on hand. I would personally suggest that you do not move these items. So if you have the ability to use them up at your current location, then do so. If you can't, then you might consider giving them away or selling them. If you really want to move them and they're still in the original bags, then what I highly recommend is that you probably use at least two large trash bags to contain them and help make sure that they don't rip open but personally I would not move them at all fertilizer can be extremely dangerous and the smell of those items is gonna be very difficult to get out especially if you're mixing your garage items with your household goods now because what you keep in your garage can be extremely varied across different people and as far as what your hobbies are I can't cover everything that might be in someone's garage but something to remember is your truck does have a weight limit so when you rent your vehicle, you can look up and determine how much weight that vehicle can actually take. And a big thing with garage equipment is that a lot of that stuff that you keep in your garage tends to be very heavy compared to your normal household goods. So if you are mixing those together in the same vehicle, keep in mind how much weight your truck can handle and how much weight all of your household goods might actually weigh. Because if you're overweight, that can cause huge issues with your vehicle. Now let's move on to the kitchen. We're gonna start by talking about how to pack your plates and your glasses. Now you can do this the professional way, which is pretty easy, and you can buy these to help divide them up and keep them safe. And this usually involves buying a larger, more sturdy uh, moving box as well. There's typically your standard ones and then your heavy duty ones. The only downside with this is that it does cost more money. Now there are some other unique ways that you can help pack your stuff and not have to buy those for everything. So let's talk about, you can put paper towels or paper plates or styrofoam plates in between your glass plates. So this will help protect them from chipping and breaking and it gives an instant barrier. It also allows if you're using paper plates or styrofoam, you now have something to eat off of when you get to the other end so you can reuse them. For your glass bowls, you could use paper towels as well between those. So you put a paper towel in, put the next bowl on top of it, and then wrap the whole thing in packing paper when you're done. This protects the insides and the outsides from being damaged. For your smaller end appliances, such as your microwaves, your air fryers, your KitchenAid stands, or anything along those lines, the easiest way to pack those for your move is if you still have the original boxes, simply put them back in. If you buy them in the future and you have the space to be able to keep those boxes and just put them in a storage closet, then I highly recommend that. It's extremely simple to just put them back in the same packaging with all of their styrofoam to protect them. Now, if you don't have those, then use a heavy duty box. So again, there are standard boxes and then there are heavy duty boxes, which are usually marked differently and we'll say heavy duty on them because you need something that's gonna be able to handle the weight of that item. When you go to pack your kitchen drawers, such as your silverware or serving utensils or anything else you keep in your kitchen drawers, one of the easiest ways to pack these so that you can reestablish yourself is simply pack the entire drawer in the one box. 
And then for padding, you can literally use your kitchen towels or your linens to stuff those in there as well and stuff them around those objects to pad everything nice and neat and you maximize space. If you're packing up your pantry, one of the things to consider is when you're packing cans, be aware that cans add up in weight extremely fast. It may not feel like anything in your hand, but a small box full of cans can easily weigh 30 to 40 pounds. And it might even tear out the bottom of your box if you don't reinforce it correctly. So just make sure that you're not putting too many cans into a single box. Moving on to clothing. If you have a bunch of clothes in your closet that are on hangers, you don't need to go through and take all those clothes off the hangers and then have to figure out where you're gonna put the hangers. Simply put trash bags over your clothes, put them in there as is, that keeps everything contained, and then you can put them in the truck and use it as padding between other objects. For your dressers, a great way to pack all the clothes in the dresser is simply take the clothes out, put it into a trash bag, and then put the bag back into the dresser. Now you might wanna to wait to do that until after you get your dresser into the truck so that that way it's not heavy while moving it, but this puts everything right back in the same spot and doesn't take up any more space. If you have a large shoe collection, you can also put those in the trash bags. If you happen to have the original boxes, you could of course put them just back in the box, tape them shut, and then you can put them in the truck as is. But to take up less space, you just put them all in a trash bag and then put them in the truck. And of course, you don't wanna use these as padding, so I would put them somewhere where they won't get damaged and squished by something else that's big and heavy. When I buy a TV, I like to keep the box that it comes in. Because when you go to move, the easiest way to move your TV is put it back in the original box with the styrofoam that's already made to protect it best. Now, if you don't have the original box, the best thing you can do is go buy a TV-sized box at your moving store that's gonna fit your TV and then protect it to the best of your ability. I like to keep mine stood up in the truck like it would normally be when on your TV stand and then I like to tie it down into position in an area that's safe and not gonna be destroyed by something else. Something like a mattress next to the TV can help protect the TV from being damaged by other boxes if things shift around. For your furniture like a couch or chairs, you got a couple different ways you can put these in there and protect them. So you can wrap them in plastic and then put furniture pads that you can rent from like U-Haul and put them over the top once they're in the truck. Or if you have blankets, you can cover them with a blanket and then wrap them in plastic. That way the blanket can't move anywhere and that can also protect them all in the truck. So whichever method works best for you. Something else you can do is wrap packing paper or newspaper around the legs of your furniture so that when you move them into your new house, especially if you have wood floors, you won't damage the floors in the process of moving. If you have to unassemble any of your furniture, what I recommend is creating a labeling system using Ziploc sandwich bags when you do this. So when you take off any of the screws or parts and pieces from that furniture, put them all into a bag, make sure it's labeled so you know what it came from, and then I like to put all those bags into one central location. I usually use this Ryobi tool bag and I put all of those pieces in there and when I get to the other end, I know exactly where all of those screws are that will help reassemble all my furniture again. Now, if you have some larger pieces of furniture that you don't wish to disassemble and they happen to have storage compartments in them, I recommend using those storage compartments once you have it in the truck. So move the furniture to the truck and then put it in a location where you're able to slide boxes or put in bags to fill in those spaces so that you're maximizing your space inside the vehicle. When packing your bathroom or laundry room, something to consider is your shampoo or laundry detergent could make a humongous mess if they were to spill. So if you're gonna put them in the boxes, then first assemble your box, then take a trash bag and put it inside the box. Now take all those items that you want from your bathroom or laundry and put them inside the trash bag. Once the box is full, tie off the trash bag and then tape up the box. If you don't wanna use boxes, I would recommend using plastic bins. Put them inside the bin and then when you're done, tape the bin's lid so that the lid can't come off in the truck. Something to remember is that your washer and dryers have space inside them. So you can put items in there. Now some washers, something you might have to do is you might have to lock the drum. So you might have to look that up on your model if you can do that. But Keep in mind that because of that space in there, you can put all kinds of items into the drums themselves and therefore save you more space inside the truck. If you have a deep freezer, this is another place where you can put items into. So if you've already emptied out your deep freezer and used up all the cold items that you would normally keep in there, and your deep freezer is just gonna go in the truck completely dry and empty, you could open up the freezer once it's in the truck and pack as many items as possibly can inside that deep freezer. Now I'm gonna cover some of the miscellaneous tips and tricks that might help you out in your moving process. 
Now I'm gonna reiterate some of the ones I actually talked about in last week's video as well. So first off, create a labeling system. Know your labeling system and stick to it. So if you're gonna use a Sharpie and just write on your box in Sharpie saying what's in that box and marking it in fragile or non-fragile, then that's great. If you wanna use a more complicated system with colored Sharpies or colored tape, then that's great as well. Whatever you like, just make sure that everyone who's packing knows the system, follows the system, and when you get to the other end, you follow that system as well as far as putting those items in the correct locations. Also, as you pack, understand that anything that has a breakable item in it needs to be labeled as fragile. So if you put any breakable items in a box, label as fragile. That means even if there's just one breakable item in the box, that box is now a fragile box. And personally, I like to keep fragile items separated from non-fragile items to the best of my ability. You might also wanna create a discard box or a donation box. So while you're packing, you might come across items that you no longer want or simply no longer need. And the best thing to do is consolidate those items into a single box or maybe a couple boxes if you have enough stuff and just keep them off to the side so that you can deal with them once you're done. If you have a lot of books, then keep in mind that those books will add up in a box extremely quick. So I would recommend using only small boxes so that you can help make sure that you keep the weight down. But understand that this box, this isn't even full of books and it already weighs 34 pounds. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is electronic devices. So if you have a laptop or computer, Xbox, anything like that, you might decide you want to take those electronic devices in the car with you. I prefer to keep those devices with me to the best of my ability. So my laptop, I do not put that in the back of the truck. That goes into my personal vehicle or it will go in the front of the truck with me while moving. Now for the Xbox, I still have the box for it and I know it's gonna be more or less secure. So I put it in the truck and I put it in a safe space. So it depends on what you have and how well you wanna keep it protected. But I would recommend if you have the space in your personal vehicle, Keep the electronics with you in your vehicle where it's not gonna get damaged in the back of a truck. This video can't possibly cover all the different things in your house that you would have to move and different ways to pack those. So make sure to check out some other YouTubers to find their suggestions or different techniques on how they best pack their household goods. If you like this video and it's, you found it helpful, then stick around because I will be doing a video on how to actually pack your truck efficiently coming soon. So make sure to click the subscribe button and click that notification bell so you know when that video is posted. That's it for now and we'll see you next time.